Community Hotline is made possible with generous support by Gresham Ford, the dealer with a heart. The Contribute to the Community program provides the opportunity for the Gresham Ford team to make a positive impact, serving their customers and helping people across the community. The Outlook, serving the residents of East Multnomah County for more than 100 years. The region's number one source for information, the Outlook provides readers with intensely local coverage of the issues and people that impact our lives and community. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission, advocating on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. And by Stamp Connection and BeFit Gems. A very special thanks to all the sponsors who help make our programming possible. Hello, I'm Monica Weitzel, the host of Community Hotline. On this program, we like to focus on the organizations that make such a profound difference in the lives of you and your neighbors. Many of these groups work specifically with youth, as the need is great. Tonight, we'll hear from one of those youth-focused organizations, Playwright Inc. You'll hear how Playwright helps youth heal from trauma and learn to cope and grow through the creation of their own character-driven plays. Then we bring it home to Metro East Community Media. We help everyday folks like you learn to create relevant content for films, television, and the web through technology and media. Here at Metro East, you control the media. Whether you're 18 or 80, there's always something of interest on Community Hotline. Don't go away. Tonight's episode is coming up next. Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weisel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. I'm glad you joined us tonight. We're going to start out talking with a couple of people who I already have decided are a lot of fun, so I hope you'll enjoy them too. I have, the organization is Playwright Incorporated. I have with us Cecily Overman. You are a playwright coach and actor. Mm -hmm. And Bruce Livingston, you're the executive director and coach and, and the founder of the organization too, right? All true, yeah. yes. It's a pleasure to have you both here. <laughs> so it was fun watching you dance, hear all the music started. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. But tell me a little bit, if you would, uh, about Playwright. Uh, when I first heard the name, you know, I had lots of ideas what that might be, but it wasn't what I thought it would be. So tell me what exactly your organization does and maybe a little bit of the history. History is easier. Okay, we'll start. Uh, <laughs> we started um, in 2003, did our first workshops in 2004. Um, and the nature of the beast is that we go to kids where they are. We go to their site, usually in alternative schools or community organizations of one sort or another. Okay. It's a one-on-one -on -one program. We usually work with eight students at a time, and there are eight coaches, plus wow. somebody to sort of keep an eye on the whole gestalt. Yeah. And the workshops are 10 days long, two and a half hours a day for the first nine days. It's and then pretty intense. It's extremely intense. Yeah. And it's that one-to-one -one relationship that is, that is key. You know those kids well by the end of that time, don't you? I would think. We do, yes. So what is the purpose? What is the mission there? You're working with these kids. Who are these kids? Our mission is to transform the lives of youth at the edge. At the edge is the term that some of the kids that we work with came up with. Really? I like that term. I like that term. But define it for our viewers. It's, it's perfect. It actually came out of a, a day when we were working at, uh, with a group at Mount Scott uh, High School. Mm -hmm. And I knew we were going to get a site visit from a, an important program officer at a foundation. Okay. 
And in the process of writing grants, I was just getting frustrated with all of the, you know, the flavor of the month terminology of <laughs> describing the kids we work with. At risk, disadvantaged, underserved, marginalized, yada, yada, yada. So I took this group of eight students. Uh, we'd been working with them for a few days, so we had a good relationship. I put them in a room and I said, you guys have half an hour to come up with a phrase or a term that describes you for purposes that <clears throat> we will use in all sorts of ways. And remember, it's got to be a term that we can use with the blue-haired ladies in the West Hills. <laughs> Yes, there are some that probably wouldn't work. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and, and Youth at the Edge is what they come up I with at the that. end of it. And, I, love, and they, I love that they came up with that. Yes, so. and I think it, it was perfect because, yes, they are at the edge. They are, um, they've had difficulties for one reason or another in thriving in mainstream educational systems. Um, and in the, in the broader sense, some of the kids we work with are refugees and immigrants. We work with incarcerated kids, but they've all been thrown off track somewhere along the line. At the edge, though, is also where artists live and work. And when they come into the workshop, we are welcoming, welcoming them into the community of theater artists. They are becoming part of that community. Yeah. Well, they're at the edge of of the, the trauma or whatever it is they've gone through, but they're also at the edge of something better, right? I mean, they're- Exactly. Absolutely. They're gonna yeah. move into, you know, hopefully, you'll be able to help them find whatever it is they need to, to kind of move off that edge or um, move into something that feels better for them. Yeah, and part of the, 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 the key to that is, is the way we approach the work, which is by not letting them tell their story, we want, them to break that narrative, because that narrative is partly constructed by them, but it's also largely constructed by people around them. Sure. It's a received thing, and it's been a groove that's been worn and worn and worn and worn. And among other things, they're usually told that they're not very smart, that they're not gonna mm -hmm. be successful, et cetera. So our focus is about getting away from story, building characters that are fresh and new. That's why we use non-human characters, so they don't use received oh, characters. Okay, I watched uh, a little bit of uh, several different uh, uh, plays that, that were being done, uh, and there was a, you know, there was a garden fork or something like that, and I'm thinking, well, that's interesting, and that explains it, uh, because yes, they've, they've, they have their own stories, but like you said, they, uh, Part of that is their story, but so much of it is like if you're a victim of, you know, violence in your home or and abuse, or if you're, you know, you've you've had to escape from a country that was, you know, in a, a bad place and it's safer for you here. You're, those are things that are very, very difficult for anybody, and for a youth who maybe has an even harder time coping with that. Um, yeah, I can see how getting away from that story, those, it becomes their story, but then they probably assume a lot of it as their own problem or their own issue. And, and through writing their, their plays, they are able, able to break to, out of that. Yeah, I think and, that's a, a very novel idea. Mm -hmm. you, your background was interesting. You had a lot of like neuroscience research. What was it I read? That, that well, it's re really an anthropologist okay. for a, a long time. Um, and theater and anthropology have a lot, or the anthropologists spend a lot of time looking at theater in different cultures. Um, but the, the neurology part of it is completely um, from the standpoint of a rank amateur. Make that totally clear. But when I was first in, involved in, in this work and, and saw the effects that it had on kids, long-term impact, mm -hmm. and here's a, this is only a two-week relationship and it's really changing mm -hmm. kids' lives. So what the heck's going on? And that's what led me, thanks to the internet and the access we have to all sorts of stuff. Right, right. Um, plus, I took a number of graduate courses at PSU in, in interpersonal neurobiology. And it became clear from that that what we were doing, the th various theater games that are used um, in all sorts of theater work, but we use a lot of them in playwright, that that combined with the eye-to-eye -eye connection between two people is what really allows the brain to change. Wow. Yeah, and that's what needs to be done. Cecily, tell me about your involvement with this. So you are an actor and a coach. So are you one of the people that has the one-on-one -on -one with these, with the, the kids you're working with? Yes, I do have the, I have the pleasure of doing so. Yeah. I, 
uh, get a chance in the in the workshop all of the the students we call writers okay. so from day one we call them the writers and like we that. are um, we are their coach so we don't give them any words we give um, just like a coach who is is helping to empower and guide them but not T telling them at all what to say or where to right. go in you the story. Give them kind of a framework, like like no, you you, you aren't the character. These are non-human characters, or you know, or that it has to be this long. Or what what kind of framework do you even give them? We really come from a uh, from a stance of it's. Uh, very much character based and um, within that character then conflict so we will ask a lot of questions and they will get very tired of us asking questions <laughs> of well um, it can be a why or it can be a well how as you had mentioned a garden fork yeah um, so how does your garden fork move when it's when it's happy when it's when it's um, when it's, it's challenged, motivation. when it's yeah, exactly. So <laughs> kind of s challenging also their brain in that way of seeing, going outside of their their box, out of their comfortable norm, mm. and you get a lot of one of the beautiful things you were talking about the eye to eye, and sometimes uh -huh. we are able to get eye to eye contact, right. but the entire time the coach is very present with their writer and a lot of times we have youth that will sometimes put their head down on the desk for minutes at a time saying i don't know i i don't i don't know and you're just sitting there and, and you're you're all really kind of in their face a little yeah, bit, yeah and not in a not not in a bad way but no but very very much present so when their head comes back up and they say this amazing thing this amazing image or this amazing line of dialogue we're right there to Take it oh, that's down. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I imagine a lot of the kids don't have a lot of those one on one interactions with people that are positive in their lives. I mean, it, at least in the past, that may be the case. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of adults don't pay enough attention to kids or treat them, you know, as their equal. And I think that's a shame. <laughs> um, I, so, what do, you, what do you see the kids getting out of this? What, what, what kind of impact has your organization had? They'll tell us. Oh. Will they? Like yeah. we, did, we had a um, fundraising event at the Oregon Public House in December, and a couple of graduates from 2006 came to that. Wow. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. what, did, what did they say? Tell me, what, tell, me, tell me about somebody. You don't have to name names. But tell me about somebody that's gone through the program and how that may have affected them or what it's done for them. Well, one I can think of also from that era, because I think it's, it's fascinating to be talking to kids that we worked with 10 or more years ago. And this particular young man has now had a, a successful series of, of jobs, not a career. I mean, he's not like going to medical school, but he's had really good mid-level jobs uh, ever since. And, and we were having coffee the other day. We get together every few months and, and he said, you know, if it weren't for playwright, I could be under a bridge right now. Really? Wow. That's impact. <laughs> That's impressive. You know, a lot of these are kids that have come from domestic violence and drug mm -hmm. riddled situations. And on the other hand, the, the, the immigrant refugee kids that have had traumas that are unimaginable to us, you know, yeah. seeing their yes. parents killed in front of them. And, um, Can't even imagine. Yeah. Um, you brought a video that I almost forgot about, but you brought a video that, uh, tell me what we'll be looking at if we take a look at this. this it's, a, it's a very short video and it's a montage of, of, of pictures from workshops that we've, we've done. Okay. Uh, and it's an attempt to really um, show and tell what our workshops do in a nutshell. Okay, well, I think Let's... we'll take a look at that now. Let's roll that.
That was powerful. It really was. So the kids, each, each person, each writer writes their own play. And then it's professional actors like yourself mm -hmm. that actually act them out. Wow. So they get the chance to be the, the writer. We get to be the scribe as the coach. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to worry about punctuation. They don't have to worry about Takes spelling. Takes that pressure off. They can just mm -hmm. talk, you just talk through things, yes. Yeah. And then a beautiful thing is they get to see their, they get to yeah. see their work performed. That's so and great. there are so many of these youth that that's one of the big things that they say is they'll say, I've never done anything before. They created something they, that was, that yeah, people got to see. Yeah. They finished something. And, wow. And yeah. seeing the transformation with some of these youth, it's fascinating to me to see even at the beginning of the week, you've got some of the, uh -huh. Kids with the crossed arms and they're like the tough guys. Who are, yeah, <laughs> yeah, who are you? End of two weeks, they're like, oh, I'm gonna miss you guys so much. Oh, it's been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. What? How do these kids come to you? How how do they get involved with playwright? We're we're asked by their schools basically. That's, okay. Uh, we we have an office in in Northeast Portland, in a very generous church. Thank them very much. Okay. Um, but we go on site, so primarily right. to alternative schools uh, or other facilities in the community. So you have basically partnerships with these schools. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and quite a, quite a few of them in the area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you going to be expanding your services? We hope so. We, we did one expansion, it's kind of fun. We went halfway around the world to <laughs> the city of Tbilisi in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia. How did that happen? That's a longer story than we've got time for, <laughs> but it was pretty fun. Wow. And uh, so six uh, remarkable women from uh, two organizations in Tbilisi came to Portland and trained with us for 16 days and then went back with a couple of us and did a workshop there. Oh, how great is that? So next time when I have you on, you'll have been you know, all around the world again in some other, some other place. But are you, so you're basically in, in Portland for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, possibly gonna come out to East County a little more, maybe? We hope to, yeah. yes. Yeah, there, was, there would, there would yes, be uh, a need and probably a lot of welcoming arms to you if you did. We're ready. Yeah, good, ready. okay, we'll talk. Um, in the meantime, the kids are referred. Do, do they have a choice as to whether or not they can come? Is that it, something it, that they're like? It depends, on, it depends on the school entirely. Okay. So our position is we talk to the school Here's what we do. Here's how we're going to work. For example, we do we ask the schools not to tell us the backstories of any of the kids oh, unless it is necessary. Well, the yeah. reason is that we we know that you cannot know somebody's backstory and not have that affect the way you ask questions. Implicit way you bias, right? It's, you <laughs> it's cannot another get around word, it. but it's true. Yeah. 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 So that's key. Um, then the schools actually determine how that works, and, and because of the of the wide range of kids in, in the schools that we work with, some of them, one school, for example, um, has a, had, used to have a, a contest within the school to see who got to be in playwright. Really? 
Yeah, Portland Night no, High School. That's nice because that's a very positive thing that you win. Hey, look what you get to do. It was great. That, un that school, right. unfortunately, doesn't exist anymore. Right. There are other schools where we've been working uh, for a dozen or more years where the staff knows from the experience they've had, they can identify exactly which kids will benefit most right. from this, that's and they right. mm -hmm. encourage yeah. them strongly yeah. to participate. Right. And we're almost out of time, and I'm sorry to say that because it goes way too fast. So. <laughs> Tell me what else I need to know about Playwright, or what our audience should know about Playwright. Come to our shows. Okay, where, where are they, when are they? We've got a show out? coming up, uh, goodness gracious, at Arts and Tech High School in Wilsonville on June 6th. We June have 6th? one okay. coming up at Alliance for Meek High School. I believe it's May 11th, I'm not sure. May our, 11th. It is May yep. 11th, yes. good. Okay, yes. so if we go to your website though, will those be on there? They'll be on there soon if they're not okay. there right now. Okay. We just booked those those workshops. So. so anybody can come to watch the shows. Yes, there right? are a few shows that will be up where uh, that are not open to the public, but mm -hmm. because they're in in um, protected environments. Okay, sure. Uh, but in that case, if people check in with with Playwright, we can do a quick background check, and it's usually oh, okay. okay. Sure. That makes sense. We want you gotta support. protect the kids, yeah. Mm -hmm. But okay, so and if people are interested in getting involved, do you ever need volunteers, or if they just want to support you with a little bit of, a little bit of a dinero? We even know, take it, lots it, of dinero. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay then. Absolutely. <laughs> then go to the website; they can find out how to help support you. Right. right on. It sounds like a great organization. I wish I had more time to talk to you, but you'll just have to come on again. Sounds Love good. to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you, Monica. You bet. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks so much for watching this first segment of Community Hotline. It's an exciting organization. It sounds like they're doing really important things for our youth, so do check them out on their website. And don't go away. We'll be right back in just a few minutes with more of Community Hotline. generous support by Gresham Ford, the dealer with a heart. The Contribute to the Community program provides the opportunity for the Gresham Ford team to make a positive impact, serving their customers and helping people across the community. The Outlook, serving the residents of East Multnomah County for more than 100 years. The region's number one source for information, The Outlook provides readers with intensely local coverage of the issues and people that impact our lives and community. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission, advocating on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. And by Stamp Connection and BeFit Gyms. A very special thanks to all the sponsors who help make our programming possible. I feel like everybody loves music and for kids like us in Rockwood to have something like this like the tools that you guys provide for us I feel like it's really important because we can get our you know our story out you know we can tell about what we're going through in these streets and stuff
community media is priceless. Valuable. Community media lets you tell your story to fit your needs. My favorite thing about community media is it's gotta be the people's shows. Mm, I think my favorite one is Karaoke Oli. Oh, Karaoke Oli's yes. a good one. We sing live karaoke on TV for an hour. Hamster versus Monster. Nap time with kittens. Community media brings programming like Chambers of Commerce, the Faith Community. Psycho Chicken. Do you have any UFO shows? No, I wish we did. I, I would like one of those too. Yeah. Children's programs, high school sporting events, and of course the ubiquitous city council meetings. Only when we hear from folks in their own voices with their own stories can we truly connect. The future is accessible. Everything we do today paves the way for tomorrow. Como medios comunitarios, tenemos una parte importante en una cultura que está constantemente cambiando. Y nos vamos a preguntar si habrá el suficiente de la información en el futuro, adelantando y adelantando. How do we share our collective resources within and between our communities? Làm thế nào chúng ta có thể sử dụng công nghệ truyền thông chúng ta muốn làm cho tương lai của chúng ta tốt đẹp hơn? Izazov za nas je da napravimo budućnost dostupnu za sve. To start the conversation, join us at Metro East Community Media. Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. I'm glad you stayed with us because now we get to talk to people from Metro East Community Media. Imagine that. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Hello. Monica. Jean Hall, you are, oh gosh, what's your title now? Media? Services. Digital Media? No, Media Services Manager. Thank you. I don't have my notes here, so you have to help me out here. Uh, yeah, that's what you do. That is what I do. And Glenn Dyer, you are the equipment room... And production specialist. And production yeah. specialist. Yeah, I should know these. But I don't have them memorized because you're both still kind of in the new category here. Very new. Yeah. So just to back up a little bit, we have, um, we have classes that we teach here. Once people have taken classes, they can check out equipment. They can use this beautiful studio and other uh, services we have here, like our editing suites. And... Really, you guys are one of the main people that our volunteers are going to talk to when they want to do any of that stuff. And, and you were hired to, uh, to be that liaison with the public and also to manage that whole, the whole the equipment room and everything that goes with it, which is kind of a big deal. So we're really, really happy to have you both here. <laughs> now, Glenn, let me let's start with you, because you started out uh, as... A volunteer here at Metro East, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So tell me about how, how you ended up coming here and, and what that path was like. Well, um, I, I actually uh, heard about this place first from um, somebody I went to college with, uh, Ben, who also happened to end up working here for a little while. Um, and uh, yeah, he just mentioned that it was a great place to intern because he also interned here when he went to um, to, to my college, and so uh, I was I, that at Mount Hood. Was yeah, Mount Hood, yeah. Mount Hood Community College. Yeah, and uh, I, I I thought I'd give it a shot and uh, volunteered here for a long while. Uh, <laughs> a long while, long yeah. While. Um, uh, I think I got Volunteer of the Year last year. You uh, did, and um, that, you know, and that's like our biggest award that we give out is Volunteer of the Year. So you know, oh, for sure, way to go, <laughs> way to go, and that is given to volunteers who. Uh, who not only do their own work, but help out with other people's productions and people that are willing to help. And because that's kind of what this is all about. I mean, we're, we're teaching people things. People can make their own shows, but you can't do it without the help of other 
volunteers. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and, and for me personally, like, uh, I, um, I just wanted to get into this kind of field of like film and television and stuff. That's what mm -hmm. I went to college for. And so what I did, I was working at a warehouse at the time, um, but the problem was the hours just wouldn't correlate with uh, the volunteering that was going on. Oh, right. So I made the hard decision, which was I had saved up enough money to where I could live for a year and a half without needing to work. Wow. And just spent all my time volunteering. So I didn't know that. Yeah. That's, fa that's why I remember, I remember this distinctly, asking you if you were available to do something. You said, yeah, I'll do anything. Yeah. I, you know, I'm available. I'll do anything. And I thought, huh, yeah, I, huh, 40, check that out. Complete, completely free schedule. I want as much experience as possible. And that's what you said. You said, I want as much experience as possible. Yep. And now you work here. <laughs> yeah. So that did, <laughs> that did pay off. That's amazing. I really didn't know that. I, that's, um, that's, a pretty good, that's a pretty good success story, I think. Huh? Yeah. So, Gene, you, you are a newer hire mm -hmm. uh, for us. And you are kind of the kind of the manager of the equipment room and uh, and are helping us uh, well you're both helping us roll out some new things some new technology but tell me about what, what your background has been uh, my background um, at, well it's been it's been varied right it's yeah been, you know. I mean I just as far as um, media goes after I did the video production program at PCC mm -hmm. I interned um, at Open Signal before it was Open Signal, Portland and Community Media. Yeah. yeah, and so I was, I was, I, my mind was oriented toward working in community media, and that goes back to when I was a kid. Like the first time I was certified over there was when it was Portland Cable Access. Wow, that yeah. goes way back. So I mean, I just had that. That was just part of. That was just where I was headed, mm -hmm. and um, when this. Um, position opened up. It was, you know, sort of like stop everything and see if I can make it happen, which it did. I'm here now, and um, it's nice because, I mean, at the same time, um, I'm coming into something where we're because we're launching the digital, we're digitizing, we're digitizing. This, our our inventory system for checkout and as and and gear management. Um, it's also, I mean, before I got here, Glenn went through and organized. Um, Everything. So in terms of having to, I mean, you know, we're cataloging everything. We're, yeah. we're the librarians, you know. We're, you are the librarians. We're putting uh, yes. things where they go. And, you know, I mean, it's not the Dewey Decimal System, but I mean, it's. <laughs> no, it's better than that. It's better. It's, it's better a little faster. That. It's got a, you know, like little laser tag light. And, um, uh, but um, I just, you know, sort of just jumped in. And it's been great having Glenn here because you've been here so long that he knows, I mean, he really understands the inner workings of the machine. Right. You know, and it, I don't. I, I mean, you're, I, you're still learning. It. I'm still, you're still learning, learning, and it, there's a lot to yeah. learn. You know, in every direction, it's like just. I mean, learning, working, interacting with the volunteers. It's a, is its own world. Uh -huh. You know, because there. I mean, there's so much going on here. There's so many people that have. So I mean, there are volunteers that have been coming here for two decades. That are you know they've seen it all. You know, so there it's have like, been volunteers coming here for three decades. I know, yeah. and so like I mean, it's like I you know I'm interacting with people where I'm just like okay, I, it's sometimes it makes more sense for me to ask questions than it does to like, like troubleshoot. For, I'm like you it's know I mean you ask and make up the yeah, answer. Yeah, it's like I'm like I don't even know what you're you're yeah. doing it. You've been doing it, but um. Yeah, so that's kind of my background was there. I've spent years doing audio. I'm a musician, you know. So, like, I've always been around gear, and I love, um, I, I just, I love toys. That's really what it comes down to. <laughs> so it's it. kind of a little, I mean, it's a bit of a dream job, because when I shut the door and it's just me sitting in, you know, in the room playing with things, like, it's, you know, I get to learn you're, how you're all the gear works. trying to learn all this stuff. You know, and then, like, troubleshooting things, like, deciding whether or not we're going to send, you know, them to out to be fixed or whether I'm going to try and fix it myself. It's like, that's what I do with my, you know, own time own, yeah, in my own yeah. studio at home. So yeah. it's like, it's that's a little, it's very comfortable. Um, everyone here is amazing. It's, this, it's, I mean, a, it's a good group of people here. It's so yeah, awesome. It really is. So, Glenn, I gotta give you props for getting that, you know, equipment room organized. We have a lot of stuff we check out. We have a lot of equipment. So people take classes here, then they can say you take a class in field camcorder and you want, then you want to check one out. And, but you just don't get the field camcorder. You have all the stuff that goes with it. You know, the, right? Mm -hmm. The microphones and Depending the on tripods setup, and anything. whatever it is you want. Yeah. So you guys, I mean, you you organize it now so that you know where to find everything. The staff knows where to find everything, and yep. you're able to get it quickly to somebody that wants to come check it out. 
But then you also, both of you can help any, um, we call our, our community producers volunteers, if they want to come in and they don't know exactly what they need. So they're going to do maybe their first shoot out in the field. You know, you can help yep. them, right? Is that right? You'd be able to say, no, have you thought about this? Yeah, or, yeah. Our, our uh, volunteer director, uh, Seth Ring, uh, kind of referred to it as we're like the doctors or something. We just diagnose the Diagnose the, the problem, up, yeah. And then, then the, prescribe the, the, the treatment. Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> or the, the well, yeah, method. Yeah, it's a windy day, so what do I need you know, when I'm going out on the field, right? All of that. It's a super sunny day. Or it's I, like, this know. is an interior situation with high ceilings, and what kind of mic would be really good for this? You know, right. I mean, it's like, if you're, you, if, well, that's the beauty of what we do have here, is we have something for every, just about every potential application. It's not a one size fits all thing. It's really know? not. It's like a microphone is not just a microphone. No, it's not. Yeah. And there are so many ways to go about it, but it's, you know, that's the nice thing about it. It's like, so far so good. I haven't, I've yet to have anyone come back to me and go like, you prescribed the wrong <laughs> treatment. And when that happens, you know, like, I mean, I, I expect someday it will. Yeah. But, you know, thus far it's been like, you know, people are like, yeah, that's great, that worked or whatever. And so that's so you, a good feeling. You'll need malpractice insurance yeah, after I that. already <laughs> suited up big time. Yeah. So, so you're <laughs> librarians, you're doctors. Let's see, you're also uh, trainers because you help people, you know, when they come in and they don't remember how to use something, you know, because we, our classes are pretty down and dirty. They're like, get you in there, we're going to teach this to you, you're going to get out there and start using it. That's a lot right. of information, then also once you're in the, you know, once you're in the vibe of, you know, your creative, whatever you're doing, all creative people, like, we all do it. You get into your creative mind, whether you're mining from the left brain or right brain, I feel like, you know, it's very hard to bridge that wall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I've had people already call me up and go like, you know, how do I format the memory cards, you know what I mean? Yeah. Things, simple yeah. things yeah. with cameras that they've already learned, but, but they're, they're like, they're, in, they're, they're setting up to doing all this other stuff and that's their first time with GH4 in the field and they're like, what do I do? So it's like, that's, I mean, it's perfect because, you know, I can help. I like that's helping, right. it's great. That's a good, it's a good thing for you. Makes have. you feel really good. Yeah, yeah. So when people come in, they can not only check out the equipment, uh, they can use the studio space. So if somebody uh, has their own show, they want to do their own show, or if they don't want to do their own show, they, other people can come and work on your show. So you can, a lot of people come in and just take the classes so they can work on other people's shows, or they can work on this show, which is great. You know, this is, the Community Hotline is a great opportunity for people to really hone their skills. I recommend it. To you, good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank I you. I mean, I do all the time. I mean, I've, I've only worked on the show twice, but um, it's, everyone knows what they're doing. <laughs> That's good. So, well, we have a great director. Yeah, yes. and yes. it's just, it's really good to be in an environment where you don't, you know, there's not, I mean, there's very little guesswork going on, and it gives you a sense of what's possible. You know, I've dealt with a couple of um, volunteers who've come in, and they have really big ideas, and they come in, and they're not, not anyone that's um, green, but they come in, and they want something that's, like, really ambitious. Yeah, yeah. And just didn't realize that, oh, I need a crew to do, right, you know, this. Right, Yeah, do you, <laughs> I'm sure you've both found that out, that people come in with really big ideas, and if they big. are brand new, it's like, you know, don't set yourself <laughs> up for failure, right? Yeah. And I think that's probably one of the most important things you probably have to tell them is, you know, if you start small, master that. You know, we'll, we'll, you can go, come in and do a, a 30 second piece for us, and we'll use it as filler between our shows, like a commercial, because we don't have commercials. You know, start small, start with something more manageable. Uh, start with Studio B, maybe, which is a smaller studio, and it's a little easier to manage. And there's plenty going on in Studio B. Yeah, it's there is. so powerful. So, there's so you much know, you can do. Yeah, get people to start small, become successful there and it will help you move on to the bigger stuff. Yeah. And so then when people do go out in the field or wherever and they're going to, um, they have footage, then they can bring it in and use our edit suites to, to edit it. And you gentlemen help them out if there's issues, correct? Yep, absolutely. If and when. Um, yeah, I, I, I specialize in editing back in college. It's my favorite uh, thing to do, so. I, and I, that's a great skill to have because that's, I think, really the hardest thing for most people is the editing. For sure, there is a bit of a learning curve, but yeah. you know, I, I run people through it uh, uh, with all the little different things we get. As you said, it's kind of a crash course that we give you. We mm -hmm. give you all the basics and stuff, but there's a lot of little things you can do with Final Cut and the other programs and stuff. And it's, it's, it's you kind of hold their hand and walk them through it. And oh, yeah. sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Patience is a really good virtue in the job that you have, because you know, people get frustrated mm -hmm. sometimes, but 
you know, if you can help them through it, that's great. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, but but yeah, they always end up learning something in the end and getting a little better and all that. Yeah. And that's always great to see. What's sure. the favorite part of your job, Glenn? Uh, well, favorite part of my job is when uh, people people don't need to talk to me as often because uh, <laughs> they, they're successful. They're successful. They know what they're doing, yeah. um, and they're they're getting exactly what they want out of out of uh, their product. That's that's what that's I love great. to see. That's a good answer. <laughs> so one of the one of the things that you've been spending a lot of time on is is something called Checkroom, mm -hmm. and that's uh, why don't you tell tell our viewers kind of what that's about, how that's going to work. Because it's not launched yet for the public. Not for the public yet. Um, we're almost there. There's, it's not, at this point, it's just really, so what it is, it's, it's an inventory system that allows us to um, keep track of all our gear. Um, it's just, it's just like a library. You know, we know where the, where the gear's going, who has it, how long they're gonna have it for when it's due back, which allows us to organize it so that, you know, say you want something in May, I can look into the future and say like, okay, well that's gonna happen here. But we've also got, you know, in May we might have, you know, some workshop that someone else is doing and they need a bunch of gear. So it's a great way to be able to, to just, you know, move you all those pieces forecast around. Forecasting all and yeah. it also allows us to keep track of the health of the gear. It's, it's just a really amazing tool for keeping um, things healthy and alive and making sure that everybody has what they need when they need it. Yeah, that's good. And there is eventually like what you were alluding to is there is a client facing aspect. And so over the, you know, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we're gonna start um, a try on a trial basis with some of our you know, strongest volunteers who can handle dealing with it. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, it's cause it's a bit yeah. to learn. Yeah. Um, it's when, really, it's really not too bad, though. I mean, I you it's know, not it's, it's terrible. pretty simple. It's pretty actually. straightforward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a pretty yeah. good program. So people eventually will be able to actually reserve their own gear online. Or after. if they yeah. want to go so far as to have the app, there's an app available, and they would be able yeah. to plug into that as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm on my way. Let's see if it's available. Yeah. Oh, it is reserve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's peace of mind. They can control their own. You know, it's all. I love the idea of just putting that control in the volunteer's hand. Yeah. Yeah. And if, but if they, if they don't want that, if they just want to come in and have you help them do it. So, I mean, that's what there. we're here for. Yeah, Absolutely. we're still there to do it. Which you know, I and that's great. a lot of, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I don't think that element's ever going to go away. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't think they, so either. I think people, you know, I mean, there's a lot of times like what we were saying, people don't know what they necessarily need. Right. So right. those are the phone calls I feel most of the time. It's like, I mean, it's like, it's one of the more fun parts of my job is trying yeah. to take the puzzle of, oh, you're going to do this. So let's figure out, let's put together a package for you, you know, and then, yeah. you know, hopefully, like, like I said, so far, so good. But <laughs> Glenn, you brought a couple pictures, right, of the equipment room? Yep. Did you? Yep. I, if if the control room can bring those up for us, um, people can get kind of an idea of what what it looks like. The it's, beauty of yeah, now. The, the, the beauty of now, because it's um, okay. So this, well, go ahead and tell us what we're looking at here. Oh, sure. That's the um, the back room there. Uh, we recently got some shelves put in and uh, containers to to stack everything into there. So. So what kind of things are in those containers? Uh, the, the back room is mostly stuff that's not used in your typical checkout it's it's um, it's like power strips it is um, a bunch of audio cables a bunch of video cables that you don't necessarily use in like a standard um, camera strip but they're nonetheless very important things to have on hand and, and and they're well they're well marked so you know how to get them quickly for somebody if they need for them. everyone for exactly them. yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's that there is the uh, main um, the main area um, it's the a general function of it isn't too different, but it has been arranged to where all of the main stuff that, like, it's basically the opposite of the back room. It's the main stuff that you pick out, that everyone picks out on, like, their, their journey is right there. Your audio equipment, your video equipment, it's all right there um, with, an easy, with an easy reach. So, so people can come in and they can um, just... They can get a camera kit that has what all would be in a, in a typical camera kit if somebody was checking one out. Like, okay, now this is a, just a different view of it. Yeah, just a yeah. different angle, yeah. um, basically, just showing off um, both sides of the, the main complex there. Um, and yeah. Typical so, camera so. kit's just gonna basically come with camera, batteries, memory card, um, your 
tripod for whatever, based on whether it's a field camera or DSLR or um, iPads. A lot of people love to use iPads for documentation as well. Yeah, but, because they're very, very simple to use. And, you know, HD image, it's, you know, yeah. I mean, it's as good as anything these days. Tell me about the, the iPad using those. How, how do people use those for, for um, doing well, a production? Well, well, they basically that it's not it's not like your typical just iPad that you read your book on or something. It comes in like a little um, frame that mm -hmm. you can hold it on. Um, it also comes with a tripod, a little light, a little microphone. Like it, it, it just basically becomes its own camera set, and you can use that to very easily uh, take some videos, take some photos, and it's very compact. It's very easy to use. Um, it's perfect for vloggers and yeah. or on doing. I've I've dealt with a couple of people who use them to um, stream directly to YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Like so, just various events or interviews. I, I mean, lots of people. Lots of people use them for interviews. Yeah, it's it's kind of shocking how many people actually prefer that format. Is, is it, it seem easier for people to use? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. it, it, it's, it's pretty clean. It's, I mean, it's a, it's the whole package is there, the mic, the lights, it's we, all like. And we have everything for them, so they don't have to, you know. Yeah, have just to carry it away. And the thing is, <laughs> you know, we can't talk prices on the air, but we have very low prices for taking our workshops and then for checking out our equipment, and it's like nothing, you know, it, it doesn't even compare to what, you know. It does not. If you have to go rent it, <laughs> rent it somewhere. So, you know, take our classes and, you know, uh, become a member and you have the opportunity to, to use all this really great equipment use this studio which you can do anything you want with you can open up those doors that go out to the parking lot and drive a car in here yeah, bring a horse in that. here bring a grand piano piano in here oh. we've had all that all Don't sorts of orientation yes, yes we have had a horse oh, in here. Wow. yes we have <laughs> yes we have and our orientation the next orientation is coming up uh, is it april 6th saturday april 6th saturday april 6th from yeah. uh, 10 to noon Yes. Mm -hmm. So the orientation is free to anybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can call and sign up ahead of time, but you can, if you need to, that's the one class that you could just show up for if you, if you want to. And and you'll get the studio tour, of the tour of our whole facility. Facility. Find out what our uh, what our policies are, what what we have to offer, what you can offer us. Because what we want is something to put on our channels. You know. And the orientation is great because it's a it's a flood of information. Um, I, I took it just to do it, and I already knew the place, but just walking through it with Seth, he was directing, and it's it's just there's so much information, and just watching people just get excited and start signing up for classes right away, yeah. it's like a really, really great way to introduce yourself yeah. to the community to, right. and yeah. to the facility, because a lot of people don't know this is here. <laughs> That's true. This is our 35th year, and there's a lot of people who still don't know we exist. Yeah. So yeah. we do have much better branding, however, now. We've got great lighting on the outside of the building and, and pictures of our volunteers, and it's, you know, it's, it's a little more obvious what it is yeah. we do. We also put out these um, workshop catalogs every quarter. This is the newest one that just came out. Um, fresh know. off the presses. Pardon? Yes, hot off, hot <laughs> off the presses. So in, in these workshop catalogs, it has the schedule for the, um, for all the classes we have. We have some core classes that we take, or that we offer every month, and then we always have some special extra ones uh, from time to time. So we will be offering, this will be available uh, in our studio, and it's also available online at our, on our website. But uh, there's a lot of good opportunities here. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you, uh, it, this will be your, we're having a big volunteer dinner coming up. This will be your first volunteer it dinner. It will be my first, yes. Yeah, we're expecting a couple hundred people. I'm terrified. And, uh, you're terrified? It's really fun. <laughs> I mean, just ask Glenn, Mr. Volunteer of the Year. You know? Yeah. 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 I, mean, I wasn't fun. working at that time, but you know, it, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. yeah. It's, we do celebrate our volunteers. They're they're really great, and um, we're really happy to have both of you guys here working at Metro East. Is there um, anything that you're really looking forward to on this job that you haven't gotten a chance to do yet? Mm. Mm. Or have you done it all? No, I, you know, no, no. I mean, I'm just. I'm just getting to the place where I don't feel overwhelmed. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's like I'm coming any to work job, every day going like, I know what I'm kid. doing, you know? Any, any new job, there's such a learning curve. But um, yeah, it's, 
It's, it's a, a lot of moving parts here. Well, today, for example, we had virtual reality workshops for mm -hmm. staff and, and some of our volunteers, you know, to learn all about that. So, so there's a lot of stuff coming up. Any new equipment coming in that we should know about or any new technology mm. that you know of? That's, 360 know. cams. Oh, yeah. What's that? Um, there are 360 cams, but uh, that's uh, 360 cameras. That's an extension of the VR reality, and those aren't going to be online for a while. But um, but yeah. that's coming up. They're, you know, I mean, how exciting is cool that? cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, wasn't there talk about like a 4K kind of kind of stuff too? Yeah, um, and I just I I, I just. Yes. <laughs> wish list. Yeah. And there we is do, a we big always wish have list. A wish list. We always have a wish list that yeah. we work down, but yeah, we, we have very much the state of the art equipment and, and, um, mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. good, it's good stuff. Well, I really appreciate you guys being here. Don't, don't ever leave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Stumble down the hallway. Yes. Thanks yeah. for having us. Well, and I hope that people will check us out on our website, metroist.org, and then come in and, you know, say hi to Glenn and Jean in the equipment room uh, or wherever else we have you. I know we're, we're going to get you working in our playback department a little bit, too. But you yeah. guys are going to be the ones that are really talking to the yes. to the, the public the most. Yes, so. definitely. Absolutely. You come down here, you will run into one of us, for sure. Good deal. Good deal. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Monica. You bet. Thanks for watching Community Hotline tonight. Hope you've enjoyed it. I know I have, and uh, we'll see you here next week at the same time. I'm Monica Weitzel. Good night. with generous support by Gresham Ford, the dealer with a heart. The Contribute to the Community program provides the opportunity for the Gresham Ford team to make a positive impact, serving their customers and helping people across the community. The Outlook, serving the residents of East Multnomah County for more than 100 years. The region's number one source for information, The Outlook provides readers with intensely local coverage of the issues and people that impact our lives and community. The Mountain Hood Cable Regulatory Commission, advocating on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. And by Stamp Connection and BeFit Gyms. A very special thanks to all the sponsors who helped make our programming possible. County Commissioner Jessica Vega Peterson. Tune in to Community Hotline Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and you'll find out about local issues and organizations making a positive difference in our community.
So we're here out at Rockwood DIY, and our goal is to bridge the digital gap. Uh, upon completion of this program, they get a free computer. Working together made something really cool happen. Changing language. Pay your bills. Like Google, Chrome. So that everybody has access to the same opportunities as other people have. We use video games to inspire young people about their future and use the games that they love to play as a catalyst for interest in activities that we believe they should be spending their time on anyway. The education system misses when they start with, we want you to do X, Y, and Z, instead of starting with, what are your interests, what are your desires, and can we do that together? And for many of those kids, well, that's video games. That's a platform for success in youth development, no matter what sphere we're talking about. In, in this case, we're talking about technical education. For the working poor in our community, an unexpected doctor bill car repair can plunge them into financial crisis. Birch Community Services helps these families improve their self-sufficiency by providing food, clothing, and other essentials in the program of accountability and empowerment that lets them reduce debt and increase savings. Participants pay a nominal monthly fee, provide volunteer hours, and attend classes on budgeting and saving. For the generosity of local food producers, volunteers, and financial supporters, Birch provided over 8 million pounds of food and clothing to more than 900 families in our community in 2014. Visit our website to learn how you can help Birch Community Services make a difference in the life of working poor families. I'm here to teach uh, classes about phones and tablets uh, to anyone in the community, but we have a lot of seniors here. I think there really is a need for classes like this. A lot of us who didn't grow up with uh, these kinds of things, you know, we're, we're just kind of overwhelmed by them. You know, the elders that we serve and we work with have, um, you know, are so gracious. They're so, they're so pleased to be supported without someone trying to attach an extra service or an extra fee. All parties coming in just to want to learn. Hi, I'm Gresham City Councilor Mario Palmero. Tune in to Community Hotline Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and you'll find out about local organizations making a positive difference in your world. 